Hello everyone, in this video I will show you how to track, solve, and calculate 3D geometry on three different footages using FlaxFlow. The first one is easy, while the next one is medium in difficulty, and the last on is the most challenging. I hope this video helps you get an idea how to use the add-on. If you have any questions or feature requests, feel free to comment them down in the comments. So we start by installing the FlaxFlow add-on. Go into the preferences and then click install from disk. When you download it, ensure you have the latest version. You will see policy warnings, but these simply indicate that the add-on uses third-party modules such as the Computer Vision Library for Python and NumPy for matrix operations and other performance tasks. Then we go into the motion tracking workspace. First, I will track the easy footage, then work my way up to the medium, and finally tackle the hardest footage. I start by clicking all the buttons one by one in the first panel. This sets the scene frames, applies the recommended settings, prefetches the footage, and loads it for the optical trackers. Then I will begin by adding trackers to the footage, which I will later filter using the filtering button in FlaxFlow. I click the optical tracker three times and just like that we have covered our footage with trackers. And by the way, this is not sped up. Then I click the filter button, which sorts, filters, deletes, and resolves the entire scene with each click. With just a few filtrations, we already have a perfect solve error. Next, I will add two extra trackers to ensure I have three solid trackers that I can use to define the floor. As we see here, one of the newly added trackers isn't tracking forward. This is because of the new optical threshold settings. These settings determine the level of uncertainty at which the trackers give up. In this case, we can simply decrease the threshold values to allow it to track correctly. Now as you can see, the tracker is fully tracked and we now have three trackers we can use. Now we just resolve the footage to be able to use these as the floor. We then use two trackers to define the scale and rotate the camera around the 3D cursor to adjust the rotation of the scene correctly. The next step is to use FlaxFlow features to add geometry to the scene. FlaxFlow offers three different ways to do this easily. The first method is to use the automatic one-click geometry feature, which allows you to click anywhere in a solved footage viewport to get the 3D position. Here's a little demonstration of how to do this. Simply hold Coral plus Shift, then right-click where you want your 3D position. And just like that, you've got your 3D point. If you add multiple points, you can create an entire wall this way, but make sure to join the points into one geometry before trying to create a face between them in edit mode. As I mentioned earlier, FlaxFlow includes additional features for adding 3D geometry. One of these methods involves clicking on a point in one frame and then doing the same in another frame. This will create a point at the intersection of these two points. You can also activate the jump feature to make the add-on automatically advance a certain number of frames forward, allowing you to simply click while the add-on handles the rest. So now we will start with the medium difficulty footage. This footage will contain a lot of motion and motion blur, as well as shaky camera movement and low light. So firstly I change the view transform to standard to make the colors in the footage appear correct. Then I proceed as I usually do by making the current footage active, setting the scene frames, applying the recommended settings, prefetching it and loading it for the optical trackers. As you can see the footage contains a lot of blur and noisy textures. The first thing I usually do is add optical trackers to cover the whole scene. To do this, make sure the Add Trackers option is enabled, along with one of the placement options as well. Then to add optical trackers on the frame with the fewest trackers, I simply click the Optical Tracking button. Notice here that the trackers don't last very long, and many of them are only able to track for a few frames. This is due to the Optical Tracker Max Change and Optical Threshold settings. If we decrease the Optical Threshold, more trackers will be added. Now as you can see, more of the added trackers gets tracked for a longer duration. After we've added trackers across the whole scene, I like to start by removing trackers with outlying path data. To do this, click Find Track Outliers to calculate the outlier value for each tracker, then adjust the selection amount by dragging the outlier threshold slider. After we have done this, I just click the filtering button a few times, which sorts, deletes, resolves, and more in each click. Here I notice that the solve error goes up when I try to filter more. To prevent this, I hit Ctrl Z to undo the changes and then decrease the percentage filter amount to remove less trackers on each filtration. 
We can also change from a percentage and instead decide a number of trackers to remove each time. Once the filtration gives us a higher solve error, I hit Ctrl Z, then I reduce the filtration amount even further, and continue. After a while, I notice that even if I filter out more trackers, the solve error does not decrease. This is a sign to increase the overall number of trackers by using the optical tracker. Here, we receive a very high solve error, and once again, we need to remove the outlying trackers that are causing this high solve error before we continue to filter further. And then I continue in an endless loop of adding new trackers, removing trackers with outlying movement, and filtering. When I receive a higher solve error than I had before, I simply press Ctrl plus Z to undo the latest change. And just like that, we have a decent solve error. Of course, you could continue like this and achieve an even lower solve error, but I am satisfied with this for now. If you notice that the optical tracker does not give you the result you're looking for, you could also try using the Add Trackers button, which uses regular trackers. One very important thing to look out for is that the last solve you perform needs to display the message Successful Flax Solve. This indicates that all the trackers have calculated bundles and their 3D positions. If you do not receive this message, your 3D geometry will not stick well to your footage. Here you can see an example of how it looks when we set up the scene and use the point cloud geometry feature in FlaxFlow. Lastly, let's tackle the most challenging footage. This footage includes a lot of motion and significant variation in the environment. We start off as we usually do by pressing all the buttons one by one to set up the scene correctly. The load footage for optical trackers often take around 10 seconds. After it is loaded, we add optical trackers across the entire footage. For this scene, I choose these threshold settings for the optical tracker, but sometimes we need different values as we saw in the other scene. Once we have added all the trackers, we begin by removing the outlying markers, just as we did in the medium difficulty scene. Then I start the filtration process by clicking the filter button until I can't achieve a lower solve error. I notice that it often filters out the trackers at the end of the footage. This is because it contains a lot of water, which causes external movement that doesn't follow the movement of the scene. To prevent these externally moving frames from affecting the result, I choose to remove the end frames. Now when I resolve, I can see that the entire footage is covered in a blue color, which means that the solver was able to calculate the movement throughout the footage. Now I can try to filter again. We can directly see the improvement in the solve error that removing the last frames achieved. But when we try to continue filtering the footage, we see that the solve error increases. To work around this, we can try to filter away the outliers using Blender's native filter option. We still see that the solve error remains high, even though we tried Blender's native filter operations. We can try lowering the number of filtered trackers per filtration and see how that works. We managed to lower the solve error to 0.69 with a successful flax solve before it started to increase again, so we are satisfied with that. Of course, we could try using FlaxFlow's outlier features or add more trackers and do one more iteration, but for this demonstration, it is enough. Now we will continue by building the scene geometry. The first thing we do is go into the Solve tab and click Setup Tracking Scene. Currently, our scene is just floating around, and that's because we haven't yet defined our floor plane. Notice that we don't have three good trackers to define our floor with. To solve this, we can manually add two trackers on the ground, and then optically track them by disabling Add Trackers and clicking the Optical Track button. Then we need to resolve the scene to incorporate these two new trackers into the solve. Notice that our tracking solution just increased by 0.01 pixels which is fine, but make sure yours doesn't skyrocket. If that happens, try choosing two different points instead. Then select your three points and use them as your floor orientation. After that, set the scene scale by having two points selected and adjusting the scale. Notice that the rotation is still off. To fix this, change the orientation mode to 3D cursor to rotate the camera around the cursor, which is the center of the scene. 
As a final small step before we add the geometry, generate an ST map and export it. The first thing you should do is create the ST texture, which we will later deform to represent our distortion values. To do this, go into the Flax Flow settings and generate an ST texture with the same resolution as your footage. After we have generated the texture, go into the compositing workspace. Here you will need to add your newly created ST texture. Then add the ST export node. Connect your texture to the node and link the outputs to the undistortion part of the node. Shout out to Sean Kennedy for making this node. To make the ST map exporter display your distortion, go into the node by pressing tab and select your newly tracked footage as the footage input. Now you will see the ST map correctly bent to match the undistortion of your footage. If your ST map does not currently fit in your view, make sure to increase the percentage amount in the render settings. To increase the overscan of the ST map, you can adjust the slider in the node. If you ever notice that your composition does not update, just try muting and unmuting a node to force a refresh of the preview. Once you are satisfied, you can export it as a usual render by pressing F12 and saving the image to your desired folder. Okay, now back to the scene to build the geometry. To do this, FlaxFlow offers three great features. You've already seen these features in my previous examples, but we can start with the automatic one-click geometry feature. Here we can see that it doesn't end up where I clicked. This is because of the lens distortion in the footage and the relatively high solve error. To still work with this footage, we can instead use the manual one-click geometry feature. To use this feature, we click on the same point in two different frames. This will create a highly accurate 3D point without any slipping. To avoid manually scrolling forward and backward between frames, we can use the jump feature, which automatically moves forward after we click the first point. Now you will see the 3D points generated, and you may notice that some of them do not share the same Y location, even though they are on the same plane. To fix this, we can ensure there is a larger distance between the two intersection frames. We continue to add these 3D points throughout larger parts of the geometry. Then we can join these points together by pressing Ctrl plus J and add a face between them. And just like that, we have created a wall. I continue like this, and soon enough, I have the full geometry of the scene. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. If there are any features you'd like to see in the future, please comment them below. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Flaxflow is available on Blender Market and Gumroad, so make sure to check it out.